Yeah, it's awful weird talking to the camera. Yeah. So we say, uh, hello, Uncivilized Vitality, uh, Dr. Mori and Rendell here to go over the Women's Winter Wonderland packing list. We're going to go over it in excruciating detail, uh, in case you've never been camping before. Rendell and Jill are guides, uh, Uncivilized guides. They will be along on the, the, the trip, um, hopefully, so that um, we have other experienced helpers besides just me. So we're going to go over four parts. I'm going to go over your, what to wear, uh, what equipment you'll need, what equipment uh, we're providing and we'll have, and then uh, how you're gonna sleep warm. Because it's basically an overnight camp. We're gonna meet uh, at the clinic, UV headquarters, 7 a.m., we'll be on the road by eight. We're gonna carpool. This is a self-feed, so you'll need to bring food and snacks for two meals. You're gonna be out in the cold. Feel free to snack uh, like crazy, right? Do we ever stop eating? No. Probably not. So. But choose wisely. Yeah, what you bring. So we're not gonna um, set up a grill and a, a full six course meal. But let's talk about what to wear. Rendell and I are pretty much ready to go. This would be what I would wear, just pants and a sweater. Um, but let's start with boots. So there's several ways you can go. You could just wear a pair of uh, combat boots or dress boots. This is a bad idea, mm -hmm. not gonna work. So not boots like that. Uh, a good pair of like muck boots. These are completely waterproof. Uh, they're somewhat insulated, but I would say maybe not for winter. They work okay, but your, right. yeah. your feet sweat. Logan wears them. Yeah, Logan wears them. I wear them. Uh, but your feet do sweat, and then wet is going to be bad. But if this is what you have, a pair of muck boots, waterproof is better than um, not. And then you could go all the way up to a pair of dedicated winter boots. These are pack boots. This is a brand called Baffin. I've actually had this set for about 30, almost 30 years. Um, they just buckle. I wish I'd had some lace-ups. But they're called pack boots because they're the style that has an inner... Whew, that's terrible. <laughs> I need new ones. Inner liners. This is a felt, like a wool felt liner. And I can take this out and dry it at night. Um, usually what I'll do is dry this around the fire and then I use these as sleeping booties uh, to sleep with as well. And then when I get up to use the bathroom or something, I just have to slip my whole foot down in my outer boot and I can dry that out. So you need a good pair of boots. Um, muck yeah. boots. Pack liner, packy boots. And from a woman's standpoint, whatever boots you bring, guaranteed you're gonna have to pee in the middle of the night. It's just a fact of life, especially in the cold. So the yeah. easier they are to slip on, the better when you, you know, have yeah, hilarious <laughs> have to get um, up and go and wander into the woods. What about those uh, like neoprene booties? Would you wear those to bed and walk out in them? I haven't done it yet, but okay. it's on my try someday list. So just pack boots and then you would do that. Yep. Uh, sometimes I'll take, if my Liners are drying, I'll just slip my, my foot into my pack boot because it's easier without the liner and then I can clump out and, and uh, go to the bathroom. But like Rendell said, uh, it's the women's winter wonderland, not the Maury winter wonderland because I would just lift the plastic and pee as far off to the side as I could. Whereas you guys are gonna have to maybe go farther away. Yeah. All right, let's see. <laughs> so, we're just outside of the tent. Just yeah, we're prerogative. all friends, that's fine. <laughs> I, uh, I, the only male, will be several uh, way down the trail. Uh, besides boots, you got to start with boots. You need a good pair of boots. Uh, and, and we can go over that uh, if you have questions. Get hold of Caitlin or, or me or leave a comment. And then Rendell or Caitlin or I will uh, respond to the comments. We got to start doing that. The next thing that's going to be very important are, are uh, keeping your hands warm. <clears throat> you can bring just a pair of leather work gloves, which usually what I bring to um, handle like uh, when we're shoveling snow or building the shelter or cutting firewood. Good pair of leather gloves. Mm -hmm. They will get wet. They won't keep you warm. You get an insulated pair of like mechanics work gloves. Help you stay a little warmer than the leather. Uh, or a pair of these, these waterproof uh, mechanics. They got a little grip. These are probably right. They're supposed to be for um, outdoor work. Okay. Better than gloves though are a pair of mittens. Uh, these are just surplus mittens. These are the ones I usually have in my bag, mostly because they just they have a, a trigger finger, but we're, we don't need that. And I usually take that finger out and I put it in with the rest of the mittens, and that just, I don't use that because that, that one little piggy gets frozen by himself. And when your fingers are closer together, they're sharing heat, so as opposed to them being separated by gloves. Yeah, mittens are, mittens are going to be preferable because you can always take the mittens off. The absolute best combo would be a tight pair of uh, insulated or warm gloves, <clears throat> and then an oversized mitten. Yep. This is the way to do it. Absolutely. Those that are out in the cold all the time or work professionally or, or military, this is the setup because now my hands are warm 
And if I have to do something, I can pull the mitten off. The dexterity. Yeah, and then I can briefly get it done. So mittens. And you can sleep in the mittens because oh, that's right. again, circulation, women, sorry, fact of life. You keep your um, mittens warm. Keep your fingers warm, digits. What about socks? Sometimes you can just put your hands in your extra that's, pair of socks. I rotate my socks. What I wore left or wore for the day, I put on my hands to dry. Yep. And then I that's put clean I socks somewhere. on at night. Good so stuff. that's a good tip. You can, uh, the socks you take off, and we'll get to sleeping at the second part. You can just put your day socks on. And if they're wool, like they have to be, mm -hmm. they'll dry out. So boots, mittens, and then obviously a hat. So you can just wear this. Like I have a wool hat. Rendell's got a nice wool hat. Just something you can wear around during the day. Uh, you could even go with the full, uh, the full Michigan Trapper. I these, want one. <laughs> yeah, these are amazing. Uh, this is the way to go. When I get to the sleeping, this is the one I would sleep in because I can just buckle it under my chin. It's got fur and it's a wool, uh, or not wool, but it's very, very warm. And the wool buffs too, or wool is preferable, but um, any warm buff for hair with women. If you want to do oh, the ponytail yeah. thing, then you got the top open, but you can pull it over like the, that shmi look that you like to do. Yeah, yeah, shmi. I do have the buff in the sleeping, so we'll pull that back out too. Sure. So hat, gloves, boots. Uh, the next thing is going to be a scarf. You can just bring your, your shimog or your uh, morigami and wrap it around. I have a wool uh, a wool one I just wrap around because you got to have a, something around your neck. Um, I wouldn't use this one because it's cotton uh, in the winter. I'd use my wool one. You could, at worst come to worst, you could take <clears throat> your Turkish towel. And I know it's cotton. Uh, we are out only one night and... That's fine. If you've got nothing else, you can just get a scarf and wrap that around and tuck it in. This is better than nothing, even though it's it's cotton. It'll keep the heat from coming out and that, you on want that, that buff, too. The artery is what you're trying to keep warm, right? Yeah, keep, keep from losing heat warm. in your carotid artery. Uh, so hands, feet, neck, and head. Start there. If you show up in shorts and a t-shirt, as long as you have a scarf, a hat, mittens, and boots, you would be... Uh, well, well, you wouldn't be warm. You wouldn't die. And I've done it. You'd be uh, a survivalist. Yeah, you'd be a survivalist. <laughs> ah, survivalist. So you would be um, not bad. But now you got your, your boots, your mittens, your scarf, and your hat. Absolute uh, essentials. The next thing you're going to need is your, your layers. We've talked about this before. You're going to need a wicking layer. This is just your long underwear. Um, these are mine. I just I wear these. It's just uh, like a wool... Uh, wool silk blend or polypropylene, not cotton. And then a shirt, that the same thing. So this is a wicking layer, something that's going to keep you dry because dry is warm. Anything for... If you're new to the outdoors and the layers and whatnot, and you're making work with what you have, a lot of people have gym attire. So women, you got your leggings, your workout leggings. Actually, I'm wearing a pair right now, just some Victoria's Secrets. I wondered um, about those. Those work as long under Yeah, there? it's amazing. This one's even oh. got like some netting part to it or whatever, but it, um, but it's made to wick. It's made to dry. Um, the tops oh, are the same and that can be your base layer. So yeah, so you need a base layer. Uh, you could do your, your Lulu lemming leggings or whatever the hell they're called. Uh, Lululemon. I ain't got Lululemon. that kind of money in my life, but <laughs> that's the brand, right? So leggings but you definitely need a wicking base layer so either long johns don't buy the cotton ones and two piece is better you can if you find the ones that are a, a full piece they've got to have a trap door in the back so <laughs> Look, because when you, yeah you don't want to strip cold and you got to pee man it's you and you don't have time to mess with that business you don't want to strip to the waist better. to do it now uh so you're gonna want a, a wicking layer and then this is uh these are my snow pants this is just like a waterproof outer layer Oh, I should say inner layer. So base layer and then uh, no jeans. And depending on if you're wearing thick leggings, because I had to think about it. Carrie Ann's the kind that are like warm on the inside, like oh, true. fur or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then you need an outer proof layer, like a pair of snow pants. Uh, these are just my, my outer layer. They've got like a soft lining, but I usually just wear my, my long underwear and these because for me, that's enough. But you could put a pair of uh, sweatpants or a pair of uh, pants uh, over them. Any kind of. And then a three um, buffer layer, three layer. So mm -hmm. wicking, warming layer, and then outer layer. Uh, and then just for your upper, just a, a, a button up shirt or a flannel shirt. You want your warming layer to be something you can um, adjust, open up to vent. Yep. I'm a big fan of the zippers. I call it my thermostat where I'm just like hot, zip it down. Yeah. Let zip. Heat out. Cold, Even the outer layers, some of them have those zips in the ski pants Shoot, or yeah. ski or the, Yeah. The thighs and Actually, I think these do too. 
Oh yeah, they do in the inside, they let out heat, but I really never okay. unzip them. Fancy. Um, and the other is, uh, again, wool. You can't go wrong with wool. And uh, ladies, if you're thrift shoppers, head to the Goodwill, the Salvation Army. Yeah, where's that ugly that sweater? Business. We could show them that. Oh, right, right. So this particular sweater with my fancy zipper is um, a $5 Goodwill purchase. You just got to keep your eyes open. Um, wool does not go fast in those places, so you typically find gems. And the uglier, the more fun, right? Like this is a duck sweater that is here if anybody wants to borrow it. Um, <laughs> but this is like a $3 Goodwill purchase with some thick old wool, so. It is warm. I tried to, I thought I'd take it for myself, but I can't, I can't fit in it. Yeah. But uh, it's, it's okay. warm. Yeah, good stuff. Um, my husband now has me running to, if I'm in town, he's like, go by the Goodwill and see if you can find me a wool sweater. Like, find some, I know there's not many in the, for men, but. Actually, that's the ones we find typically. Well, find me one. That'd be awesome. Uh, wool sweater, you can sleep in that too, or you can wear it as a, a warming layer. Okay. And then your outer layer, so you're going to need some kind of, of waterproof pants or snow pants or be okay with something that'll dry quick. And as an aside, this is a good idea. This is uh, the Kiwi Camp Dry Fabric Protector. And this is just a Scotch, Scotch Guard Outdoor Water Shield. You pick these up at Home Depot or Meyer um, Target. And then saturate your outer layer with these just to get that little bit of extra water uh, waterproof. If you have fabric boots, that's a good thing for those as well. Oh yeah, for the uppers. Mm -hmm. um, so there's, I would wear this with just my, my drying layer and then a coat. Uh, wear a coat that you can move around in and that can unzip or unbutton. You don't want something that'll pull over because mm -hmm. you can't vent well. Um, for me, this is... day pack, then you have to just... Yeah, and if we got to and... get undressed when we stop. This is... This is my, uh, our uncivilized, my winter shirt. So this is usually what I'm going to be wearing. Uh, and then if I get cold or between this and um, my outer layer, I usually have my uncivilized uh, uniform on. So that's just another layer. And then at night I can take off my outer layer before I get into my bed. <clears throat> and then I just climb into bed in my base layer and my warm layer. Uh, I go in base layer. You'll probably want to leave your extra pants and, and uh, sweater on or then switch to your ugly sweater. Or switch to your ugly sweater. And the other, um, I would say for snow pants are great because they're a water and wind barrier. And then uh, jacket wise, the, what gets you the most is the wind. The wind will yeah, suck that's that true. heat right out of you. So if you can have a wind barrier of some sort, even a raincoat. I mean, if you're really raincoat, going for a minimalist. Ski go. jacket would work. Ski right, jackets right. work really well. We're not going to be doing any uh, bushwhacking. So it, you don't have to wear something that's super rugged or outdoorsy because we're not, we're just, we're hiking in to make a camp, not uh, bushwhacking. <laughs> but if you don't have anything that's windproof, you could always take a poncho and throw that over your warming layers, your outer layer, because it'll cut the wind and cut the water and that'll keep you warm. So poncho is an idea mm -hmm. if you don't have a coat. And a couple extras, uh, extra things to think about <clears throat> to stay warm is uh, a blanket or a large, this is a piece of wool that we have sewn into a hoop. And I would just wear that wrapped around in uh, various ways. I can drape that because I don't wear, I don't have a coat. I would just drape that around my shoulders like a shawl or wrap that up for an extra layer of warmth. Oh, I can walk around with my... It does an amazing job too. Blanket. Yeah, it does. I mean, more than you'd think, just wrapping that around. Or this I usually will wear in the winter because I only have the, especially if I'm not wearing my snow pants, because sometimes I go in just normal pants. And I use this, uh, it's just, it's called a Norsari, uh, and it just wraps around, it's waterproof. And uh, it, it really cuts the wind and keeps a lot of heat in. And because it's waterproof, I can throw it down and sit on it too. Or in the morning, I'll get up, I'll wrap it around until I kind of get the blood flowing and it keeps me warm. So that's just a sort of an extra layer, some kind of waterproof uh, piece of blanket or kit uh, or a poncho. So you don't have to buy anything new, but you definitely need to start with your boots uh, mittens uh, and or gloves, maybe some work gloves and warming mittens, scarf and hat. Then your base layer, a warming layer, and a waterproof, windproof outer layer. Uh, it could be just your ski clothes. And the leggings is a good idea. Leggings and your uh, ugly sweater. So that would take care of what you need to wear. You don't need to bring a second set of clothes. We're only there overnight. If you fall through the ice into a lake, which you shouldn't because we won't be near a lake, but I don't know, something happens, and your clothes get really wet, we will we'll practice our adaptability. We'll make something work out there. We'll wrap you in blankets or share clothes. Don't carry the extra clothes. You won't need them. And uh, that shower is so much more rewarding when you get home. Oh, that's true, yes. Because you're going to change your clothes. So Sunday will be amazing. After we eat breakfast, you get the hot shower. 
So that's what you're gonna wear. Don't bring extra clothes. Now we're gonna roll this out of the way. See, I won't even have to cut that part. We'll just keep going. <laughs> Hopefully I'm on the, the screen thing, see oh, stuff. I can see it, you're very far. Far enough, all right, cool. So now let's talk about um, <clears throat> the gear you're gonna need. You don't need a lot of gear. Uh, the clothing is the most important. And then you're gonna have some personal gear you're going to need. Uh, a few things I would suggest. You bring your toiletries, just your toothbrush, toothpaste, and uh, maybe your contact solution or any personal meds. And then um, your toilet kit. This should be, well, I have a shovel in mine. Uh, I'll explain how to poop in the woods in the winter uh, when we get to camp. It's a little different than the summer. But I have some, I have some wipes and hand sanitizer and a bag in there for uh, because in the winter we don't we're not going to bury the toilet paper because the ground is frozen, so you're going to not be able to dig a cat hole. You have to pack that out. So bring a Ziploc bag that you're going to put your waste into. Or two. Or so two. You can double bag it if you're too concerned. Um, yeah. I have uh, female input, so a lot of women you're going to have your skincare products and your. Oh, that's true. I mean, we all got things we're doing to try to stay young and beautiful. Um, <laughs> that's right. I do that. <laughs> It is winter time and um, all these lotions and solutions and cleaning products and liquids, they freeze. So if you don't want to carry a bunch of dead weight, that's just going to freeze and you can't use it anyhow. I would evaluate how important that is in your life. Yeah, for the next morning. Speaking of freeze, I was going to suggest, so this is mine, um, <laughs> some kind of small bag or purse or fanny pack that you can keep your phone in because your phone will freeze. Mm -hmm. And I keep my toothpaste in there it, so it doesn't freeze. Uh, and I, this is on my body the whole time around my waist or over my shoulder. And I keep everything in my little purse so that it doesn't freeze. My electronics, my car keys, my ID. So this is the sort of stuff that um, I keep on me at all times. I can also carry a couple other things in here. So yeah, maybe you can keep your lotions and, and creams and ointments and whatnot uh, in your purse, <laughs> toothpaste. Also on your person, you have to have a, a way to start a fire. You don't have to have our standard, like a ferro rod and a, a tinder kit, if this, especially if this is your first time out. But you have to have, at the very least, a, um, a just a $2, how much does a lighter cost? I don't know. I don't even know. You need a, a small lighter. Some way to start a fire that has to be on your person or in your pocket or in your um, that purse. Is Yes, that has to, it could freeze. You have to have it with you, a way to start fire on your person. You're also gonna be required to keep some sort of small knife on your person at all times. Nobody's gonna get lost because we're doing a group effort, but you have to have a knife. It doesn't have to be big, could be, that's a full belt knife. I have oh yeah, perfect. My personal one. Yeah, see where Rendell nice carries that. Cheese cutter right here. And um, comes with a little pair of that. Yeah, so she's got her fire and her knife all together in one, one packet. Uh, I usually keep my little ferro rod around my neck and I always have two or three knives on me, but you will be required to have a fire starter and a knife on your person at all times. You might not have a lot of pockets. I am to understand that women's stuff doesn't have a lot of pockets. If you have snow pants, you will. Snow pants have pockets. All right. Otherwise, get a fanny pack or a purse or something you can carry around with you that'll keep those. The other thing, your boob or your, um, your cleaning kit can just stay in your backpack until you need it. The other thing I would suggest keeping on your person at all times would be your headlight, your headlamp, make sure it's got fresh batteries or it's charged. And I usually, I just throw mine around my neck and wear it so I have it. That's how I do too. Uh, and then everybody needs to have a glow stick. If you don't have one, I'll give you one. But that way at night we can crack these and use them for the one night. And about the headlamp, I sleep, I know a lot of people have paranoias in life, but I sleep with mine on my neck. I don't, I've never Yeah, choked, I do too. Never choked from it. And if you um, are not one to want to go into the, if you're not accustomed to doing your business in the middle of the night in the woods, you probably want some light to guide your way. So it's a lot easier to find if it's around your neck. And they're, 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 they're stretchy. You're not going to roll over and get no. uh, choked to death on your headlamp. I more often so you, than not forget I have it. I'm yeah, you're wearing that during the day. And then when it's time to go to bed at night, just drop it around your neck. Mm -hmm. You're going to be wearing your scarf anyway, tucked in. True. So it's uh, nice and warm or your buff. Uh, and that way at night, like Rendell said, when you get up to pee, you don't have to search around the dark for your glasses. Uh, if you wear glasses like I do, I put them in the case. And drop them right in my right in my fanny pack or purse that's on me so i don't have to look for anything and not that anything would occur but in an emergency if we had to get up and run or leave camp for some reason and we did one uh, time that's true but we'll, <laughs> we'll talk about that later um 
if you have to leave, I can roll out, uh, I drop out of my hammock, grab my boots, and I know I've got my light, uh, my knife, my fire, my ID, my car keys, and my glasses, everything's in this purse. I just have to jump up and run. Enough to so, increase your odds. Yeah, so keep those, and then this won't, this won't have any problem at all. So you'll need that, just a few bits of equipment, a knife, a fire starter, light, cleaning, uh, cleaning supplies, and a little purse to keep it all in with your ID and such. At this uh, point, I'd usually make a joke about identifying the body, but I'm not trying to do that. I edit that out. <laughs> what were you saying? So you say, oh no, I, I was going to say though, um, I was just thinking of the cleaning kit with the wet wipes, but again, it's the same freezing things to consider. Oh yeah. So yeah, like the wet wipes, I'll keep, uh, like I have this as my usual kit, but I won't need the shovel uh, or the bag. So usually what I'll do in the winter is I just put my wet wipes in my, my little fanny pack. That way they're close to my body. <clears throat> They'll still be cold, but they don't, be yeah. refreshing. They don't freeze. You don't want to. You don't have to break off a piece of the wet wipe and use it like a like a spatula, um, <laughs> or a scraper. You can warm it up, or at the very least, you can put it in your hands and warm it up, or keep them in your bag. So besides that, we will be eating. You will be providing your own food, and you can plan ahead on how to do that. But as far as uh, water goes, we're going to get to that in the group equipment in a minute. We'll always have some water kettles going, but everybody should bring at least two water bottles. Something that's steel that you can put in the fire, not a thermos, single walled. I've talked about that a lot in the other videos. And then just another uh, liter and a half of water. So this will be what you need. Yeah, like that steel can. <clears throat> that's a good idea. Rendell's tied her bright green bandana so she knows which one's hers. And it's a good for flagging if you need. Yep, or, use it for yep, signaling. signaling. So you'll need a, a water bottle you can put egg. in the fire. If you don't have a steel water bottle, um, maybe just a steel cup or container. If you don't have either steel containers or cups, uh, that's fine. You just have like a little insulated coffee cup. You just bring a mug from home if that's all you have. We're just trying to have fun. And we're a group, so right? We'll yeah, and then we'll somebody share gear will have it. if we need to. And then we'll have a pot that you can boil in. I'll bring a, um, for instance, uh, a kettle, but a second bottle of water. And then we're going to have lots of water. Uh, I'll show you in the next uh, next section, but it's better if you have your own cup at least to drink and eat out of and then something you eat with just grab a spoon out of the kitchen drawer depending on what you're eating or you can do just all finger foods. But some sort of water vessel. I want each person to bring at least two liters of water to start the day. And you need to drink a lot of water. Yeah, and you'll drink those at least uh, those two liters the overnight and then we'll provide the third and fourth liter for cooking and drinking. We'll have those but something to drink out of. So you're not sharing bottles with everybody because uh, cooties and whatnot. Mm -hmm. You don't need an entire bush pot and eating set like I've talked about in the other videos with my spork and my tin foil and my rag and all this. Uh, if you have a bush pot, which is just a large, large kettle, uh, and that's your cup and drinking vessel, that's fine because evidently I can't get it out of the bag. Um, this would work just fine for eating out of and uh, drinking out of, and I could use this to eat out of. That might be my, my pot, so that would be fine too. It's a little less convenient because the lid doesn't stay. I can't transport water in this. That's why I suggest a water bottle, but even this could work. So you need some kind of uh, way to provide yourself two liters of water. It could be two plastic ones, and ideally you'd have something metal you could heat in, a cup, a canteen, or a pot, something you could heat water in if necessary. One of the things you might do, you can talk about the, the water The bladders, bottle. yeah. Yeah. So you could use those uh, platypus bladders or hiking bladders. They do tend yeah. to freeze. I was going to say, they're not so great in the winter. So no, they kind of. I would kinda. avoid it if you can. So some kind of canteen or metal, but two liters of water. You're going to want to bring a garbage bag. Um, I have garbage bags I can provide. These are going to have a myriad of uses. You can sit on it, keep your butt dry. You can... Um, if you don't have a backpack, you can put your gear in it. We're going to talk about the sled in a minute. You can use this uh, in an emergency to uh, keep your waste in. There's, there's lots of things you can do with a garbage bag. Everybody will need to have one. <clears throat> you can also sit on the Amazon bag. So you can just bring an Amazon mailer to sit on that. They're slippery, though. The, yes, they are. Yeah. That's the Emily special you don't, right there. Yeah, the Emily special. You don't want to sit near the on a slope, but they're good to keep your butt dry. If you have a... A pair of outer pants that are, um, I forgot where I put them, over there, that are scotch guarded. You could just sit down on the ground. We will have uh, some other things which I'll get to, but you could bring that and your garbage bag. Sort of surprisingly handy. That's I know, they're super, I, you can kneel on them, you I've can sit on them. Or you can use them for insulation. 
Yeah, that's the other thing you could use your garbage bag for. Uh, for an emergency, if your feet are getting too cold, uh, I'll show you how to use your garbage bag to warm your feet up, at least for overnight. The bread it's bags. Only, yeah, the bread yeah. bag special, because it's only overnight. We can always make that work. If you're looking to do this more often, I would suggest in investing in a Sea to Summit um, dry, bag. dry bag. So these are not water resistant. These are dead waterproof. These uh, Sea to Summit, they're a little spendy. They're like 20 to 30 bucks, depending on the size. This is a 13 liter, but they come in bright colors. They've got little tassels so you can tie things off and use it. I can get all of my personal equipment in here with plenty of room to spare with my food. And then I'm wearing the clothes and the only thing I'm going to be carrying or transporting on my sled is my sleep, uh, sleep system. The other thing, you will also need a personal um, fast rope, like a 12 foot piece of rope, because you're going to use that for lots of things. I could probably provide those. The other cool thing you can do with your dry bag at night is you can put your uh, canteen in the water, heat that up to near boiling, put the lid on, drop that down in the dry bag, and then uh, clip that off. And then I, I hug that like a little little heated up, uh, what do you call them, teddy bears. Keeps right? you warm and keeps your water from freezing. <laughs> yep, keeps your water from freezing. <laughs> Yeah, then you know where your water's at. It won't freeze overnight, so you're parched in the morning. You're not dealing with a, a frozen plastic uh, bottle. If you do bring just a regular uh, plastic bottle that you get at the gas station, you're going to drink this first and save your canteen for the end. And then we can fill it out of the community pot, too. I'll show you that. But this way, it won't spill. It keeps me warm. I've got water in the bag with me. And you'd be surprised at how, how warm that gets. Yeah. And then you can use your, um, you can put your socks in there, too, and they'll dry. Um, but that's something to do. I don't have these available, uh, but you can get them on Amazon if you want, or REI or someplace like that. It's Sea to Summit. Don't buy the knockoff brands because they will leak. I think that's all the personal gear you'll need. Now I want to go over uh, what we're going to provide so you can see some of the gaps in the, the uh, equipment table. So I'll roll that bad boy over there. Oh, I wouldn't make note of in the food department. Um, as Americans or Michiganders, <laughs> we're spoiled in food and we think we need it in our face a lot and you do need calories, but don't let your food outweigh your pack. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you're not gonna starve overnight. Uh, and you know, it's small game season too. We could always catch something uh, furry and eat it right. um, just if your, you're hungry. But your fats, your proteins, and throw some, believe it or not, throw some candy in there. Yeah, chocolate. I'm a, I got some chocolate I'll show during the sleeping part, but yeah, little snacks, just kind of eating. You want to keep the internal furnace going. This is not the time for calorie restriction or fasting. Typically, we don't fast at winter camp. Um, and it'd be easier if everybody brings their food. Uh, somebody that had signed up for the camp already, actually Jamie, uh, who had asked me to put together a more detailed video about the packing list, she had mentioned about bringing uh, a thermos with some hot soup in it for evening because it'll stay. Well, that's a great that's idea. That's a good idea. So here's the things that UV is going to provide in case they popped up. You're like, well, just wearing clothes, and that's not a lot of gear, Maury. I'm not going out in the woods without that much gear because you've seen too many survivalist or uh, prepper nonsense. Well, keep in mind, you, you carry what you bring for the most part. That's so. true. I'm not carrying it. <laughs> no. um, but we'll probably talk about sleds, too, in a minute. Um, because if you don't have a backpack or a duffel bag, you can see there's not a lot to carry. But first aid, we will have this, uh, a couple of these March kits, and I have a full trauma bag on me at all times. So if there's any life-threatening emergencies, we're ready with tourniquets and chest seals and uh, everything else. Back in the car at the trailhead will be the full, uh, the full trauma kit, the boo-boo bag. Uh, we can do everything short of major surgeries out in the woods if we have to. Plus, we're only going to be 30 minutes from a hospital, so we're good. So there will be full medical on site. We will also have a couple of these pots always sitting on a grill at a second uh, separate fire called the water fire, which I think is funny. The water fire will keep these from freezing and it'll always be slightly warm, not quite boiling, but you'll always be able to go over, use the ladle and dip up and fill your water bottle. Are we when, actually bringing a ladle this time? Yeah, I'm gonna bring this one. I, I set it aside. Normally we end up with just a, like a scoop spoon <laughs> and, and that's very yeah. difficult to get a lot of. Yeah, like I've, I've learned <laughs> from the mistakes. So we'll bring a ladle, you can dip in there. Don't drink out of the ladle. This would be community water. Right. We'll keep the lids on so it stays clean, but they'll always be warm uh, and they'll stay warm and unfrozen all night. And I'll, I'll have water that we can continually add to it. Uh, and then we'll start melting snow as it goes. And we'll always have community water. There'll be, was this a five gallon pot? No. How, how many is that, two gallon? I don't know, it normally says on the bottom. 
And that one does not. All right, it's not a five gallon, it's okay. like the size of a bucket. Let's call it a two so, yeah, gallon. Three liter. Yeah, so. All right, Make so up a number. Then there's another pot. There'll always be two of these sittings. There's plenty of water. Uh, for a group of under 12 people, this will be enough for overnight with everybody's two liters they bring. So there'll be um, two of these going. I'm also gonna bring uh, and provide half a dozen of these collapsible snow shovels because part of winter camp is preparing your own shelter. So you will be doing that. We're not bringing tents or anything. So you'll be using these shelters, uh, these shovels. I will provide a whole bunch of folding saws for firewood processing, maybe an ax or two. Uh, those things will be on the uh, common gear sled. And then um, we're not gonna be breaking up, so we won't be issuing the laugh kits, the lost and found okay. kits this time, because not going that far. Have you done a video on laugh kits? I don't know. You really should. That's a good idea. All right, we'll put that, uh, I'll put that in my pocket, so I remember to do that. Oh, yep, yep. And then uh, a couple other gear, I'll prepare it. Uh, provide a pair of, we call them fire gloves. They're just like welder's gloves so you can handle the, the, um, the water pots and such. So those will be there so you don't melt your mittens. And then I always have this in winter camp. Um, it's just a cloth fortune tape telling. measure. Yeah, for fortune telling. Uh, this way we can use this to measure out some of the, the shelter construction because if you haven't built a shelter before, because uh, we're not doing tarps. Fancy, we haven't yeah. done that before. You know, usually I have a, a five foot piece of paracord knotted off for oh, measurements, true. but I'll bring something like this so we can do shelter construction. Speaking of which, what are we gonna sleep in? That's what we're gonna get to. I will bring a few of these really cheap uh, Walmart or uh, Home Depot tarps that are gonna go over the structure we make, but mostly your shelter is gonna consist of these Mylar um, emergency sheets, blankets. emergency blankets. I will provide these, you don't need to get them. Any of this, I'll get this stuff. And some two or three mil uh, plastic drop cloths for painting. So these are what we're gonna build. We're gonna build what's called a um, Kohansky uh, super shelter or a greenhouse, or I've always called it a, a, a sleeping crash uh, plastic kit. This is some pinky up stuff, people. <laughs> yes, we're very fancy. Uh, last year, Rendell had to sleep in a pile of snow with some pine branches, so we're- <laughs> Did very well. We're, we're, we're stepping our game up because there's too many of you at this event that we can go full natural shelter. So we're gonna, we're gonna fudge it a little bit uh, with some, we're gonna sleep a little, a lot warmer. So this will be your shelters and I'm gonna show you how to build those at the camp. Toward that end, I'll also provide all of the twine and the rope cordage you need, brightly colored to construct your shelters. So that's what UV is gonna be bringing and I you will grab- put it all back on the table so you can get a good- Oh yeah, you can of... set, set it back out, I'll grab the yeah. sled. Don't bring this stuff in your own packs. Like... This, we're all gonna share the load on this. And, uh, yeah, we're gonna put it in this. So this is gonna be the sled. Actually, we can throw it right in there. Super handy. Yeah, so all this stuff will sit in the sled. We got one of these for our home now. It's <laughs> main mode of transportation. Yeah, these things are great. So this will go in the sled and the extra pots and all the tools. And uh, this is something me and the guides will drag uh, with our sled. There'll be um, another sled that's gonna have two bales of straw. I don't even know if I'm in the camera. Two bales of straw that we're gonna use in our shelters as well because it might be a little too deep, the snow up north, to get some natural materials for our ground, uh, which leads us to the sleeping portion. So let me adjust the camera. I don't know where you have that stuff. I don't know, so now we're gonna adjust it down. Oh. So you can see me on the floor. All right, so far so good. Are you starting on the ground? Yeah, we'll go down here. So now we're gonna sleep. So we're gonna go the, the, the system of uh, thirds. So you want two thirds of your sleeping above you or two layers and the layer below you. So start with the layer below. I am gonna put down some straw so you won't be sleeping right on the ground. Which is a buffer in itself. Yeah, so that, that way the straw is gonna help insulate. And then we will be providing, again, this is something, if you have one, great. But if not, uh, I'm gonna provide a few. These are these uh, space blankets. That's what I've always called them. Mylar tarp, heavy duty tarp. But your space blanket is where you're gonna put your, your sleeping kit. And it'll be inside your little shelter. So that's the layer over you. And the straw and your space blanket will be part of the layer under you. And then you're gonna use a sleeping pad. We have these self inflating pads that we can, we have a few of these we can loan out so you don't have to go out and buy a sleeping pad. However, even if you don't have one of these, 
sleeping pad, you can make do with a folded up uh, wool blanket. Believe it or not, it's more important to have things under, uh, to, to tend to the things under you than over you. Mm -hmm. uh, I've slept very warm at night with just a, one blanket over me and several things under me, especially if it's straw. So you can use a self-inflating like air mattress, but then you are heating the air under you with your body heat. You can combine it with one of these closed-celled pads. Um, who, have you, you brought the yoga mat or who brought that? Oh, I brought, a yeah, yoga? it had, um, it has this reflective material on the oh, side. Oh, so that would be good. Some cheap old Amazon stuff. Yeah, but that gives you a little bit of padding. Uh, it's not really about the padding and comfort. The straw will take care of that. And it's only going to be one night anyway, but it's about the insulative value. So you can even combine these. Now I've got a space blanket, uh, an air mattress, and then a closed cell foam. That should be pretty warm. I can also take and put um, a wool blanket, or this is actually a waterproof blanket. I could use that on the ground under me. Mm -hmm. I double or, that up. Uh, lap quilts, or there's all sorts of. Yeah, and this one's nice. You can use it's like a, it's called a stadium blanket, I think. Uh, it's water resistant, waterproof on one side, and kind of warm on the other. This is a nice blanket to have. You can wear it around at uh, camp at night and then throw it under or over your bag. Um, so you're going to want to bring some sort of sleeping pad. I'll give you the, the, the reflective sheets. Something to sleep on, even if it's just a folded over blanket or a pad. I have a few I can provide. Then you're going to want something to sleep. So that's on. Then you need something to sleep under. And that's basically going to be a sleeping bag. Don't worry about the ratings. They could do, there's plenty of YouTube videos about the sleeping bag ratings, but the, the short truth of it is, is it's all a hoax. <laughs> yeah, they, there's no standard or criteria. Manufacturers just slap any rating on there they want. And there's like, th this will keep you alive. You know, if they say, this is a 20 degree bag, does that mean I'm comfortable at 20 or I, I'm not going to die at 20? So there's a huge difference. A lot of people are using just quilts or, or blankets. Yeah, I'd use blankets now. I don't even go with the sleeping bag. I'm not suggesting that the, the newbies do that. You're going to want a sleeping bag. Then you're going to want to not crush the insulation. So you don't put your extra blanket over you. You're going to put your blanket inside. So this is my extra blanket. I use this in the hammock with my quilt. Um, it's, it's yak wool. It's super scratchy. It's really thin, but it, it does a good job uh, for me. So if I were sleeping down, oh, it smells good too. Like fire, like can you smell fire. it? Yeah. <laughs> so I'd get in my sleeping bag and my blanket goes in the bag with me. So that way my blanket's in the bag because it's incompressible and I'm on maybe my other one and then I've got my sleeping bag over me with the loft. You don't put your extra, like your wool blanket outside your sleeping bag because ironically it'll crush it and you'll be colder. Uh, if you do have a, a surplus wool blanket or a scratchy wool blanket, you probably won't notice in winter camp because you'll be, uh, you know, in your warming. Oh, right, warming you won't there, right? notice it at all, no. No, so it doesn't bother you then? No. All right, no. and just I'm, nothing I'm bothers me. just a walking wool billboard when I go. Yes, yeah, wool, wool, wool. And then the other thing I want to mention to people is a pillow. I don't usually sleep with a pillow, but if you're sleeping on the ground for the first time and you get on your side, sometimes that, that angle of your neck, it's nice to have something to, to put under there. You could use your blanket. You could use that stuff sack uh, that you transported your stuff earlier in. Uh, you can stuff a bunch of things in your garbage bag and then wrap that in your scarf and use that as a pillow. I've used my pack many times. Yeah, your pack. So you try to try not to carry a pillow. But if you have a special little pillow and it helps you sleep, feel free to bring it. Now, uh, chocolate or snacks or candy. I know you, you brush your teeth, but when you get in your bag, sometimes it's good to have a little bit of a little snack. Um, you don't want to bring food necessarily in your shelter when you're sleeping, but in the dead of winter, we're not going to be worried about chipmunks and rodents and well, anything else. You don't want to bring else. an overwhelming amount, right? That's going to yeah. draw them in, but they're You don't want a bunch, but a little chocolate bar you're going to eat before you go to bed. Sometimes that sugar will kind of warm you up a little bit, or at least make you feel good <laughs> <laughs> while you lay there. Uh, uh, crying in the cold temperatures, uh, cursing Maury's name. Uh, you can nibble your chocolate and feel better. It only happens occasionally. Yeah, only once in a while. Here's another thing people bring a lot. Uh, these hand warmers, these little things work. Uh, you want to grab some and bring them, feel free. They don't last very long and I you've don't. got to be cognizant of the plastic and the waste. Oh, right. And I, I don't bring them. No. I do have, I have a handy dandy trick though. So. You have a trick? So, nice. If you do want to try them, some people, uh, my wife likes them. I, one of my sons swears by them. He, he's always got them in his boots and down in his mittens. Oh, right. I, I, 
put somebody's used one in my boots one time, my feet. Oh, yeah, so were. Well, it was hot. <laughs> I had to take them out. But when you're sleeping, again, feet and hands, right? Everybody worries about that. So um, you're going to want to wear all your layers when you go to bed. And don't, because <laughs> if you wake up cold later, you're going to wish you had more to work with. So it's kind of... Yeah, it, we call that the Mark factor. Don't... Uh, right. <laughs> Mark likes to strip down to sleep, just him and his bag. He stays warm. Maybe he's extra hairy. I don't know. Uh, well, uh, maybe. <laughs> yeah, he just... We all know. We've seen Mark in his tidy whities getting out of his hammock, steaming because he's warm. But not everybody is Mark. You're going to want, like Rendell said, if you got it, you're going to wear it to bed. But you don't want to be constricted. Right. And you want to do it with purpose, right? So um, don't go to bed with your coat on. You're going to right. have your, your insulating layer on you. If you're that cold, you will warm up as you nestle into your bed and everything gets in there. But take your coat. You're going to thank me later. Wrap it around your feet. Your feet are going to get cold. I don't care how many layers oh, of wool right. you have. But that's a trick that all of us uh, lady guides, I guess, or <laughs> UV ladies do is we wrap our coats around our feet because, again, you got that wind... Um, moisture barrier, but you also have the insulative barrier. It's just some extra on your feet. Yeah, you just tuck it down in the foot box. That's a good idea. And then you know where your coat's at? Your coat right. dries out overnight? And it's warm in the morning when you put it on. Oh, all right, <laughs> so, good news. So, yeah, put your coat down in there. That's something I hadn't thought of because I don't I don't think about man. that. I don't get that cold. Uh, or if my feet get cold, I'm just like, eh. Uh, speaking of cold feet, now when you get to bed, in addition to the stuff you're wearing, you're going to want to bring another little sleeping bundle. Uh, an extra pair of wool socks, heavy wool socks, not these. No. These little house slippers look like they'd be super warm, but they're cotton. Your feet are going to um, give off moisture. They're going to get saturated, and a couple hours later, they're cold. They're, they're just hot garbage. Don't bring these. Mm-hmm. Wool. But I look at it like nature knows best, right? So cotton grows in the summertime. It is not a winter product. Mm-hmm. But look at a sheep in the winter. <laughs> yeah, fat and covered meat. in wool. Right, absolutely. And they stay warm and don't need shelter. So. That's a good point, actually. Cotton in the summer. Cotton's great in the summer. Uh, nothing cotton on the trip. Wool socks. If they're scratching, they bother your feet. A pair of men's dress socks um, or, or pantyhose. As a liner. Yeah, yeah as wear those really as well. a liner. It keeps your feet, it's another layer, keeps them warm. You don't want, uh, though, to put on three or four pair of socks. No. It's not more is better. If you constrict... Uh, you'll actually be colder. So you want a nice loose pair of socks uh, and maybe a liner pair. Men's nylon dress socks work great. Dedicated sleeping socks. Your day socks, like Rendell said, put those on your hand when you get to bed, even over your mittens, and your body will dry them overnight. And wool naturally will dry in hot or cold. So. Yeah, and it, it dries right out. I've often gone to bed uh, in the winter like just wet. Like I've gotten in sleeping bags that have been soaked and just have to flap that wet material up on you. Uh, not in dead winter because then it freezes, but your body heat will dry it out overnight. Uh, if I don't have them on my hands, I always put my day socks under my sleeping bag so it dries out. The That's coat in the bottom is a good tip, though. That last backpacking trip. Yeah, <laughs> sleep on I didn't have a, a moisture barrier for my pants, oh, so it was right. so awful. But, yep, slept in my line and, um, my leggings and threw my pants slept under my pack pants. and good to go. And they dry right out? Or not my pack, my bag, so... Uh, dedicated socks, and then a dedicated secondary sleeping hat. You don't want to sleep in the hat you've been wearing all day. It's got insensible uh, perspiration. It picks up moisture. Bring a sleeping hat. I like these Michigan hats to sleep in because they got warmth on my cheeks and my neck. And then uh, if you don't want to wear a scarf around your neck, you can get one of these buffs. It's just one of these tubular, 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 tube shaped, tubular, yeah, <laughs> yeah, tube shaped uh, bandanas. This one's wool. You can also just use a scarf and tie it around there, but these, these bandanas go on, or these buffs go down around your neck, and then at night you can pull them up over your nose and face, and if you're wearing your hat, this is a good way to sleep. Uh, now, this is going to get moist. No, yeah, I'm not everybody say. likes that. <laughs> I am not a fan. I think I'm suffocating. But yeah, also, I don't like that either. eventually, the, um, especially in the winter, the moisture will crystallize. So then yeah, so this gets wet and it's cold. Yeah. Now, I learned from you about coming in from the top because your nose gets cold yes right? that's the next and one so yeah. you come in from the top so a hat or the buff wearing as a hat top and then you just bring it over your eyes natural blind so you don't have to worry about the moon keeping you awake and you put it over your nose yeah still breathe out of your it nose. it keeps the tip of your nose warm because the the probably the worst thing you're going to find is that tip of the nose absolutely now normally i'd advise you never put your head inside your sleeping because of the moisture it's one night if you get that cold just pull your face down in your bag you'll probably be fine one night probably be okay 
Uh, I don't like things over my face because they get wet. I often wake up, my beard will have, my beard and my mustache will have ice in it uh, just from breathing out because I keep my face out. Uh, I like that sensation. I like being cool when I sleep. <laughs> you might not love it. Uh, you can also, if you're wearing a hat like this or a clean hat, you can use your buff. Like Rendell said, if you have longer hair, you can start this down your neck and pull it up so your hair is attached in there and not getting in the way. And then you can pull that down over the tip of your nose and still ventilate out of the bottom and stay warm. And another trick is if you got a hoodie and you got your stuff falling oh, off yeah. your head, you put the hoodie up over top of it and that's going to keep it from getting lost in your yep. So layers, but not restrictive layers. And then that water bottle trick, you can bring that in the bag, hand warmers, little snack. The key to sleeping warm is a good layer under you and then a, a, a lofted layer over you with an extra blanket. So you'll need a sleeping bag and at least one extra blanket, probably two. You can always use the one for a pillow. That way you have it. And then little tricks like your coat down here, your day, uh, day socks on your hands, uh, and then dedicated sleeping hat, buff, or scarf, and socks. Do you have a, was it convection heat layer? Oh, yeah. So that's going to be our, our shelter. So uh, I think I have a video. Maybe oh, I put okay. the link somewhere about. So you never get, you never, uh, get cold. Cold doesn't get in. It, there's no such thing as cold. It's only heat loss. And you lose heat from your body three ways. Conduction, convection, radiation. Uh, you're always giving off heat. That's what the, the layers you're wearing are about, is trapping that heat. Um, sleeping in the bags is about trapping heat. Uh, conduction is going to be, when I touch the ground with my bare hand, my heat's going to be pulled into the larger cold mass, which is the ground. That's why you need layers under you and waterproofing. And then convection would be when like the wind is going by you uh, or rushing water, but it won't be in the water. But um, the wind will steal the heat away, your radiated heat, it just sort of brings it away. It's like the, the air differences. That's why you wear the windproof outer layer and why we're going to sleep inside a shelter to sort of trap some radiant heat. Uh, speaking of which, when you get in your bag, like Rendell said earlier, it'll feel cold at first and you're tempted to leave your coat on, but it will warm up. Get in your bag, under your blanket, got all your material on, and then do a few crunches or maybe flip over and do a plank for a minute. Maybe do a couple of uh, push-ups or just move around a little bit in your bag. If not, you'll just shiver it out. Yeah, you'll just shiver. You'll generate some heat that mm -hmm. way. It'll warm your bag up and everything will be good. I'm also going to keep, we've got a pretty big fire going. And I'll explain the, the shelters um, once we get up there. We'll make them out of that material we bring. Uh, last thing would be sled. So you can put all this in a backpack. Like Rendell said, she goes in the winter, especially overnight. She's, she's got, the only thing in her bag is her sleeping materials. Because there's a lot of this stuff. Yeah, so you got enough room for it. Uh, you can bring more. <clears throat> sleeping bag, two blankets, and something to sleep on. And then um, grab a kid's sled and your uh, the rope you're going to carry, and we can go. You don't even have to carry anything over your outer layer. We can just put it in your garbage bags or your backpack, throw it right in the sled, and we'll just make a little sled uh, train and haul it all out. Shoot. If we get any downtime, we can go sledding. Yes, we can also go sledding because <laughs> uh, there's great hills, and we can use the sled to bring back our firewood. Oh, Instead true. of you guys carrying trees back, oh, we can sled them back. Totally worth it, ladies. So I think that's about it. So that should be a pretty extensive packing list. I think that's the most detailed packing list we've done, that's or I've done, because I usually forget stuff. Uh, Women's Winter Wonderland, February. Oh, I'm going to mess it up. Second weekend. Second weekend. So 10th, I believe. Okay. Meet at 7, leave at 8. We'll be back Sunday. Where are we going? Uh, I think Vanderbilt. Okay. Maybe Atlanta. It'll depend on snowfall. Uh, and parking for snow in Vanderbilt. Yeah, so I want a lot of snow. Place to, depends on parking too. Uh, probably Vanderbilt. Uh, but before we go, we'll do watch uh, and witness, so we know people know where we're going, when we'll be back. So we always do that, so people can uh, catch up with us. Go over the eight W's of uh, campaigns somewhere on my my list. I don't. Know, we'll find it. Uh, but either way, get hold of Caitlin. Um, I didn't write this list up. You're just going to have to watch the video over and over and jot down Take your own notes. list. Yeah. Take notes. Uh, you should be able to handle it now. We're going to be good. Uh, we give your own food. Uh, Sunday morning, we're going to get up, have some hot water, break camp, drink coffee if you're a coffee drinker. And then we're going to stop to eat at a restaurant Sunday morning on the way home. So bring a little cash for a meal out. You only need food for Saturday lunch, Saturday dinner, and a you, few snacks. You will find that you're ravenous when you leave out on a winter camp. Yeah, you're going to eat a lot. It's going to be fun. Calories. Then we'll sit in the restaurant. <laughs> Plus, you'll get to wash your hands that's nice. in hot water and use the toilet. So um, we should be good. Uh, that's it. So uh, I should have said that at the beginning. 
Okay. Share the channel, like the video, uh, subscribe to the channel, uh, make other people watch it. Comment. Comment um, on the channel. I want your comments to know if anybody out there has experience, even if you're not going on the trip, put a comment in and tell us some of your tips and tricks. Yeah, tips, tricks, camping. and uh, tell us some, make some predictions about the camp. If you're worried about it, say that in the comments so that when you come back, you can amend the comment. Like, oh, this is the greatest thing I ever did. Uh, or <laughs> whatever. <laughs> so I'm going all the time, every time. Well, you at least feel accomplished. Yeah. No, that's a guarantee. And again, the, way, the women's winter camp is not about, it's about the experience and the challenge of sleeping outdoors with minimal equipment in February in northern Michigan. This is not, we're not going to the Radisson. This is not going to be lounging about and being, I don't want to say it's not going to be fun. I oh, have it's a, a blast. It's an experience though. You're going to focus on the challenge aspect of it. Even people who have um, difficult times yeah. come back with smiles on their face. That's true. At the end, especially when you hit the restaurant, you're like, oh, that wasn't so bad. At 3 a.m. when it's 10 below and maybe you're shivering and saying bad things about me, uh, and weeping silently. Sometimes I do. That's fine. Maybe a little rocky. Yeah, it'll feel bad then. Yeah, but by the next morning, it'll be great. So. And then you comment with, this is how I'm going to do it different the next yes. time. And then once you've done this, this is the pinnacle for cold. After that, you can handle any of the campaigns. It never gets colder than women's camp in uh, Michigan in February. Share it on the Facebooks. Yep. Yeah, share it. Tell people the other events. However, uh, this event is full. I think we're at a dozen. I think that's going to be our limit. So. Just have to come to another camp. Yeah, you'll have to. Well, maybe we'll do part two. Uh, that's it. So that's all that we sign off. Bye.